Uh, okay. I'll take a question from, wait. I want uh, A, B, C, Ruth. Uh, here's the answer. But what is, for you as a voter, for you or someone in Iowa, what is concerning to you? Well, for one, we get to be a part of stuff. The most thing is the is the closeness and the close knit of this, like such as in South Africa and uh, the Iraq, everywhere like such as, and bringing all these people together. That's what's important to us. That we actually are involved in the stuff and the decisions that our country is making. Where I, all those other places, if you ever tried to step in, no one cares what your name is. We love the we love the familyness and everything that's together here. Okay. We can mortgage your children, our future. The, we can, to the hilt, to pay for Vladimir Zelensky's futile nonsense. You know the, the statement, where we go one, we go all? Well, that has more meaning than what people think. I'm here because what Trump represents is God. And that means a lot to every country in the world. <coughs> Give me a break. What's up, guys? It's Brian here from the Midas Touch Network, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to find the words to describe these people. I mean, what you just heard was just a tiny fraction, a small snippet of some of the insanity, the absurdity, the craziness, the ridiculousness, the pro-Putin, pro-Russia, anti-American rhetoric coming from not only the MAGA rallies, but also Don Jr. and the rest of the cult members as they continue to freak out after Donald Trump's indictments and the continuation of the United States supporting Ukraine in their war against Russia. And while Con man senior decided to make a few recent strategic stops in Iowa, his son Coke Jr., Don Jr., decided to absolutely lose his goddamn mind on his podcast over the fact that Hunter Biden is now suing the IRS for releasing his tax information. Of course, Don Jr. has to misrepresent that and say he's only suing because he's embarrassed. We'll also cover Hunter Biden's lawsuit against the IRS, which he claims is embarrassing him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what's embarrassing, Hunter. Want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Hunter Biden is suing the IRS for embarrassing him by calling out his tax issue. Yeah, you know, he didn't pay taxes on millions of dollars of shady income. And that's what he's embarrassed about. Not like, you know, the smoking crack on video camera. The... Dozens of videos doing other illicit drugs, paying prostitutes all over the place. Like, you know, minor things like that. So it wasn't the videos, the photos, you know, the tooth pictures, like the other insanity from the world's most famous crackhead that embarrassed him. It was his taxes. I mean, just the absurdity of anybody in Trump's sphere to be talking about and complaining about anybody else's taxes is just insane to me. I mean, regardless of guilt, Hunter still has rights, and if his tax information was released illegally, then he has a case. Here he is remarkably mixing Russian-style propaganda with just the most disgusting bigotry you could possibly imagine, claiming that we're spending every dollar we have in Ukraine, which is absolutely false, calling it the Ukraine, which is a dead giveaway, and also just losing his shit over the fact that Ukraine has a trans woman as a spokesperson. The fact that we're spending every single dollar we have in the Ukraine, rather than doing what's right for America, where Ukraine first, America, like, you know, last. The trans, insane, Ukrainian spokesman, woman, spokes it, spokes it, spokes them, what do you guys think? Spokes them, spokes they, spokes they them. You can't even make up this shit anymore, folks. Like, honestly, I wake up and, like, I'm convinced I have to be being punked. You actually have to see this bullshit to believe it, but it never ends, and they want to be taken seriously. At this point, <laughs> when you guys see this, you're like, are they working for Russia? Like, are they, are they secretly trying to get people to, like, Go over inside with Putin because this stuff 
is lunacy. I want you to really focus in on and listen to the rhetoric he chooses to use because it's the same exact rhetoric that the Russian propagandists use and the same rhetoric that we heard before when isolationists like Henry Ford and Charles Lindbergh were using it during World War II. Here's this bigoted Putin ass kisser talking about Volodymyr Zelensky's latest trip to the United States, claiming he was begging for money. He also blames any escalation seen in this war on Ukraine. He also claims that Ukraine has absolutely no chance of winning this war, which is pretty much exactly word for word what you would hear if you turned on RT or any propaganda network in Russia right now. This comes as Zelensky is visiting Washington and begging for tens of billions of dollars and more funding. You know, we can mortgage your children, our future, the, we can to the hilt to pay for Vladimir Zelensky's futile nonsense, and that's the spokesperson they choose. I mean, guys, what the hell is going on? They want rockets that can reach Russia. They want to further escalate the world closer to nuclear war. Why should we trust a military that employs that lunatic as their spokesperson? I mean, Ukraine's lack of judgment is worrisome to say the least. Ukraine's never going to win this war, okay? Unfortunately for Donald Vladimirovich Trump Jr. over there, his track record isn't going to look too good because Ukraine is winning and will continue to win. Let's take the rhetoric you just heard from Donald Trump Jr., which is the exact same rhetoric that his father uses and the exact same rhetoric the entire Republican Party uses, and compare that to what the isolationist that during World War II was saying. I think you'll recognize some of the phrases, and honestly, I think you'll be a little shocked at how similar they sound. Basically, all you have to do is every time he talks about England, substitute Ukraine, and it'll become really, really apparent where these people get their talking points from. And just remember how wrong these isolationists ended up being, and how much things would have been different in this world had they got their way. Soon after Roosevelt agreed to provide Britain with 50 old destroyers, Charles Lindbergh became the chief spokesman for a new isolationist organization dedicated to keeping America out of the war, the America First Committee. America First, where have I heard that before? America First, America First. France has now been defeated, and despite the propaganda and confusion of recent months, it is now obvious that England is losing the war. And I have been forced to the conclusion that we cannot win this war for England regardless of how much assistance we send. That is why the America First Committee has been formed. And isn't it strange how isolationism and fascism also seems to breed anti-Semitism? Again, all you have to do is substitute the word Jew for globalist, because nowadays they don't want to come out right and say it, so they disguise it with the word globalist. But listen to this and tell me if this doesn't sound very similar. Like they're trying to kill every Ukrainian male uh, in this thing. So, you know, uh, the globalists can come over and take over the breadbasket of the earth uh, and, and control our food supplies. Now compare that nonsense to what the isolationists were saying during World War II. Isolationist and anti-Semitic groups now flooded the halls of the Capitol to oppose the new bill, including black clad members of a self-proclaimed mother's movement who cursed legislators and insisted that Jews were behind what they believed to be Roosevelt's rush toward war. So in the 40s, they had the mother's movement who thought that Jews behind the scenes controlled everything and were pushing everybody towards war. And nowadays we have Moms for Liberty, who, as you know, love putting quotes by Adolf Hitler on flyers that they're passing out and are very much opposed to supporting the war in Ukraine. But I think that's enough from propaganda Don Jr. Let's check back in on his father, see how he's been doing. One of the major problems that Donald Trump is facing at the moment is that after several years of telling his followers that elections have been stolen in this country and that they can't trust the election systems, now he's trying to get them to believe in it again and to get out and vote. Listen to this rambling, nonsensical answer he gives to his followers when asked what the RNC and Donald Trump specifically has been doing to ensure that elections would be saved this time. Um, here's my question. I felt that the 2020 election was fraudulent. So what measures are being taken by the RNC to um, make sure that that doesn't happen again. Okay, well, you're not the only one, because if you look at polls, many, many people, big percentage of the country felt it was, uh, you know, they used COVID to cheat, but they did, they would have cheated anyway. Uh, many precautions, many law firms have been hired, a lot of work has been done, and beyond RNC, I mean, uh, I wasn't very thrilled with them, obviously. You know, I was always told, you go out, you campaign. I left here early in the morning, and you go home, and at 
10 o'clock in the evening, I looked at the numbers and it was over. We were doing so well. Pennsylvania, all these states were doing so well. Then all of a sudden they made adjustments and all this crap. And by the way, it's all down. People know it. We had judges that didn't want to get involved. They were afraid. Everybody was afraid. They were afraid of the subject. It's a, it's a disgrace. What happened to our country is a total disgrace. Okay, disgrace. So, and look at, and look at the result. I mean, look at the result. I mean, practically every problem that we talked about today wouldn't have happened. Ukraine wouldn't have happened. Inflation wouldn't have happened. I mean, so many of these things that we talk about today, we wouldn't even be thinking about. That's my number one thing. Much more so than campaigning, actually, is that they don't cheat when they let, because they will try and they'll be successful to an extent, but that we're not going to let them steal this election. It's amazing to me the spot that he finds himself in. I mean, at the same time, he knows he can't answer that question because there's nothing that he's actually been doing. He knows the 2020 election wasn't stolen, but he also has to keep that door open because he knows he's probably going to lose the next election, which means he's going to have to have some excuse to give his followers on why he lost that election. So he can't come out right and say that, yes, we've done everything possible and it's 100% that they're not going to be able to cheat on this election because he knows that's gonna be his next excuse. He's gonna lose, and he's gonna claim that it was stolen from him. Here he is ridiculously claiming that he ended woke in the military just after he claims to have already ended woke in the military, but somehow it was reinstated, and that's also a word he doesn't like using because he thinks it's foolish, but always uses it. And I don't like the term woke, because I hear woke, 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 you know, it's like just a term that used half the people can't even define it, they don't know what it is. And proceeds to say that anybody returning to the Hawaii Islands after the horrible fire that they had is being forced to study woke for a week? I, I don't know, see if you can follow this nonsense. With the military, we're ending woke immediately. You know, I ended woke, totally. And then they, in their first week, they reestablished it, it's crazy. They pay instructors hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It literally, I mean, literally, they want our military to be woke. Uh, and it's just not gonna happen. You read in Hawaii where they had the horrible fire where they have people going there. And before they bring them on board, they have to study woke for a week. Can you believe this? In other words, everyone's wanting to get back to their home, finding the bodies. It was such a tragedy. You don't read about it too much anymore, but hell is going on over there. And they want to give them classes in essentially wokeness. And here's the big orange pod calling the kettle black, once again, failing to recognize the distinction between the words fascism, Marxism, communism. And then once again, is really, really jealous of, I guess, how Joe Biden looks in a bathing suit because he continues to bring it up. Funny, I've never seen Donald Trump in a bathing suit on the beach. It's almost like Donald Trump is envious of Joe Biden in the self-confidence he possesses, in the ability to not give a shit what people are saying or thinking about him at any given point in the day. Under this lunatic regime of fascists and communists and everything else. So I think it's a I think it's a terrible terrible thing. But when we get in we'll be able to stop it. We have Tom Holman, we have uh, all of the the greatest people. We have such great people. You know, if Biden went to the beach, you know he goes to the beach all the time, right? Do you ever notice? Somebody's working him. He's got these consultants and I think they think he looks good in a bathing suit. And he doesn't look good in a bathing suit. And somebody's giving him very bad, very, very bad advice. So as you can see, when it's not just pure Russian propaganda these people are pushing, it's lies and insanity on a scale never seen before in this country. But this is what we're up against. This is the direction the other side has decided to take our country. And these are the people that we have to fight on a day-to-day -day basis to keep our country safe, to keep our country a democracy, to make sure that the rule of law still reigns supreme. And if you like what you're seeing and you'd like the ability to help produce content like this, you can also check out my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash Boston Brian. It's a great way for you to help out great way for you to show everybody that you appreciate the content that we're doing, the time and energy that we put into the videos that we're making. You can also check out patreon.com slash Midas Touch and help them out over there. There's also MidasTouch.com where everything politically related, all the breaking news, anything Midas Touch related you can find on there. We have great writers, great stories. It's the first place that I check out for the breaking news and all the happenings across the political spectrum. So you guys need to stay informed, stay up to date on the information that's coming out. Make sure that we're all sticking together. Make sure you're fighting for democracy. Until the next time, I'm Boston Brian. Keep kicking ass. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.